Hello, my name is Bishaka Datta and I live in Mumbai, India and I'm very pleased that I'm going to be reading the Wikipedia page on one of my most favorite authors who also lives in London. Her name is Jeanette Winterson and I will now start reading from the page. Jeanette Winterson, Order of the British Empire, born 27 August 1959, is a British writer, broadcaster and activist. I'm going to skip through the section on her early life and get straight to her career. By the age of 16, Winterson had identified herself as a lesbian and left home in Manchester. She soon after attended Accrington and Rossendale College and supported herself at a variety of odd jobs while reading English at St. Catherine's College, Oxford. After she moved to London, her first novel, Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit, won the 1985 Whitbed Prize for a first novel and was adapted for television by Winterson in 1990. This in turn won the BAFTA Award for Best Drama. She won the 1987 John Llewellyn Rees Prize for The Passion, a novel set in Napoleonic Europe. With Winterson's subsequent novels explored the boundaries of physicality and the imagination, gender polarities and sexual identities, and have won several literary awards. Her stage adaptation of The Power Book in 2002 opened at the Royal National Theatre, London. She also bought a derelict terraced house in Spitalfields, East London, which she refurbished into a flat as a pied de terre and a ground floor shop Verdi's to sell organic food. And just as an aside, this is not from the Wikipedia article, but we are at Wikimania London and Spitalfields is just round the corner from us and I am going to go to Verdi's for lunch tomorrow. Going back to the article, um, her 2012 novella, The Daylight Gate, based on the 1612 Pendle Witch Trials, was published on the 400th anniversary of the trials. The novella's main character, Alice Nutter, is based on the real-life woman of the same name. The Guardian Sarah Hall describes the work. The narrative voice is irrefutable. This is old-fashioned storytelling with a sermonic tone that commands and terrifies. It's also like courtroom reportage, sworn witness testimony. The sentences are short, truthful, truthful, and dreadful. Absolutism is Winterson's forte, and it's the perfect mode to verify supernatural events when they occur. You're not asked to believe in magic. Magic exists. A severed head talks. A man is transmogrified into a hare. The story is stretched as tight as a rack, so the reader's disbelief is ruptured rather than suspended. And if doubt remains, the text's sensuality persuades. I hope I've persuaded you that Jeanette Winterson is not only deserving of a page on English Wikipedia, but also deserves to be read. Thank you.